What up, everybody? Back for another video. Another monthly review. The boxes are coming a little more regularly now. Loot Crate's back in action. They've been coming every month, so it's kind of nice. So we actually have five boxes here, which is rare because we usually have like two or three. So back to the old monthly thing. Let's go through these boxes, see what shit's in there, and let's give it a rating. Right, pup? Exactly. All right. First off, we got Marvel Collector. Oh, shit. Core. I'm going to spill my damn drink. That would have been shitty. Marvel Collector Core. Oh, fuck's sake. I need to stop drinking before I do these videos. All right, here's the shirt. Let's take it out of the plastic. Ta da so nothing super special. Uh, Funko's been doing this thing lately that's uh, like the black light theme. And they call it black light. It's not really black light. It's just kind of like that neon color. They've been doing a lot of characters like this. Not really sure why, but, you know, I like it. I have a lot of the figures that they've put out. They're pretty cool. So for some reason, this one's in the black light theme. But the picture's not too bad. But as I've said a million times, I'm just so over the Funko Pop tees just do regular comic book stuff i would be so psyched about this shirt if it was just the doctor strange comic book characters that would be so much better if it was like that i'd really wear it but this is just like i have too many pop tees i don't need to be that much of a fan and wear it all the time uh, as far as the quality on these shirts they're decent they're not fantastic but they're not awful either so this gets the standard 12 to 15 dollar value my box will stay and as far as a rating on the shirt, I'm going to give it like a 6 out of 10 because it's it's decent quality shirt. The design's well done. It's not the coolest design I've ever seen, but it, it's at least well done. So I think 6 out of 10 is fair. Then we got a pin of Scarlet is face. Scarlet Witch's face. And I, I've said this a million times before too. I wish they would give a backing to this. Just a simple backing. wouldn't cost really anything extra couple cents and it would make it look so much nicer and it'd be so much better to display i hate it when pins don't have backing because they just don't look as good on a pin board so i wish they would it would really increase the value on that too uh but as far as value on this it's actually going for a decent amount excuse me it's actually going for like 12 to 14 dollars which is really surprising because pins from this box are almost always like five to seven dollars but for some reason this one's significantly more and i don't know if that's because this box has just been out for almost a month now or maybe the movie was just really popular but i was very surprised to see a value that high on just such a basic pin but it is what it is uh next we got a little sticker a, a decal what are you doing uh, decal. I didn't know what it was at first, but I'm guessing this is uh, America Chavez, her little symbol. It looks a little bit different than it did in the movie, but this is comic book style. Why can't, why can't they do the shirts comic book style? Why is the sticker okay, but the shirt's not? It doesn't make any sense. But a value on this is like three bucks. Nothing special. All right, then we got our double pop figures. The first one we got is the Supreme Strange statue. Now, this one's very weird. And I don't know if you can tell, is now the time to do this? Is this right now? I'm recording. You were both asleep two seconds ago, and I started recording. Now you're going to do this. All right, Supreme Strange Statue. What's weird about this is if you look at the figure, I don't know if you can tell, the figure is like a copper color, but the statue, the picture of it, looks like a statue. And I remember in the movie, it was more of like a gray tone, like a cement color. And that's what it looks like on there, too, just like it does in the movie. But for some reason, the actual figure is like copper tone, which is really weird because uh, there's really not many copper statues, with, with the exception of the Statue of Liberty. But that's not copper color. It's green now. So it's really weird that they, for some reason, didn't paint it the right color because it would have looked really cool if it was this statue color i think it would look really cool a nice patina i have a lot of the pop figures that have that same color they look awesome but this copper color looks really weird and i'm just so confused why they would change the color for no reason like was it just a mistake and they couldn't reverse it i don't know i, I feel like there's some kind of explanation for this but we're never going to know what it is anyway the value on this is actually around 30 dollars so it's kind of pointing back to maybe the movie was just super popular and that's why these things are getting valued more than they should be. Because uh, pops from this box are usually like 15 to 20. Really popular ones, expensive ones are 30s and up, 
but you know it is what it is all right next got dr strange again um this one doesn't have a special title but this one's really cool it's the scene from the movie where he's shooting like dragons out of his hands and you can't see but there's like little tiny dragons coming out of his hands and that's really cool they they actually did a really good job it has decent detail on these dragons so i really like that i think they did a good job this one also going for about 30 bucks I'm not that surprised on this one because it's cool, but I'm a little surprised on the statue one that they're both getting a $30 value. So that brings our value on the low end of 87 on the high end of 92, which is pretty fantastic because this is only about a $30 box. So you're getting pretty much triple the value, all exclusive stuff, decent quality. Both the pops are good. I'm not sure why the pin's going for so much. Who cares about the decal? And the shirt was pretty decent quality too. And once again, I'll say it one more time, I wish these boxes would come earlier. I wish they would come before the movie because the only time I would wear like a specifically Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness shirt would be to the premiere. That's when I would wear that shirt. I probably wouldn't wear it otherwise. So I wish they would come earlier so I could have worn it to the premiere. But they never seem to do that. They release them after the movie. I guess that makes them more money. I get it, but I just wish they would come earlier. Anyway. Considering that value, I'm giving this one a 9 out of 10. When it's nearly triple the value, all exclusive, and it's at the very least decent quality stuff, that's pretty damn good. So this is the best we've seen from them in a pretty long time. Usually the pop figures we get, one of them, if not both of them, kind of suck. They've been in the habit of making like really lame characters or like the least popular characters of a franchise in there. And it's like, that's so weird. But this time they did a good job, so 9 out of 10. Next... We got the BAM box. <laughs> and as always, we get our autograph. And this one's from the Mighty Ducks, which is cool, but it's even cooler because it actually has three different autographs, which is pretty impressive. Uh, it's hard enough to get two, but three, I don't know if we've ever even gotten three unless it's been something super obscure, which I guess this kind of is in present time, but that's still really cool. I'm sure it was a pretty big hassle to get it to three different people or to get those people in the same spot at the same time to do signatures. So that's really awesome. This is going for roughly $35, which is a little bit higher than it usually is. The autographs in this and Zobi are usually in that $20 to $30 range. So $35, not much more, just a little bit, but it makes sense. This was a very popular movie when I was a kid, and I think the people that were kids then are the people that are getting this box now, so I understand why it's popular. And again, three autographs, so I totally get that. Mm -mm. Next, we got our art print from Aaron Hazauri. Nothing special about it. I mean, they did a good job. It's a nice print. It's nothing super special about it and this is going to go for like 10 to 12 bucks as the prints always do there really isn't ever a ton of value there and uh, they they've started doing this variant thing uh, i explained in the last video that every item in there has a chance to get a little one-up card which you get a a variant or like the chase version of something this is the same thing that a chase version of the print but people are trying to sell it for a crazy price but it's just not selling because i don't think anyone cares it looks so similar it's just it's not worth the money. I keep saying they should try something else for a while, but I don't think they're going to. So, prints for now, 10 to 12. Next, we got our pin. So, we're back to the one pin system. I'm still so curious. I've never gotten an explanation. They switched to the two pin system for a while. And before that, they had like six different ones. You only got one, but there were different variations of rarity. Now, we're back to getting one, and you have the option of two different ones, which fine I, I guess i'm okay with that and i guess the the rare versions of them same ones they're just glitter version which i like because if you wanted the set of them you don't have to pay a crazy price chasing some rare pin they just did glitter versions that are a little bit rare fine i'm okay with that and i'm okay with getting one of two pins not a big deal but i will mention the pins were vader and obi-wan i don't think anyone got the obi-wan pin because when i was looking for a value on this couldn't find anything on the obi-wan not no listings nothing sold nothing nothing about it so i feel like i don't know if that was supposed to be the rare one or they just forgot to mix them in there i'm not really sure but i got the vader one no big deal 12 to 15 dollars which again is weird because i explained on the last video they're usually for the longest time they were worth 12 to 15 they put two in all of a sudden the pair was worth 12 to 15 now this single one's 12 to 15 again doesn't make any sense but I'm not here to make it make sense. I'm here to give it value. 
Last, we got a key from the show Lock and Key on Netflix. Haven't checked it out. I'm sure it's great. No big deal. But I like that they've been picking, uh, making smarter choices about their prop replicas because they've done some bad ones in the past where it was like ID tags and stupid stuff. But they've been doing things made of metal, and I think that gives it um, some more authenticity. It just makes it feel real. It makes it feel like a real prop replica. So I've noticed they've been doing that a lot more, and I think that's a good move. As far as the, the quality of this, you know it's decent. It, I saw pictures of what it looks like in the show. It, like, it looks close enough, so whatever. Uh, it was a little hard to find value on this because there is an actual company that makes these that are actually uh, licensed and branded, but those are like $30. So I think people are trying to sell this for that price, but it wasn't going for that. The listings that sold, sold for around $12 to $15, which I think is reasonable. I, I think that's fair for what it is. <clears throat> I wish I had a little more appreciation for it having, having watched the show, but you know, still good quality nonetheless. So that brings our value on the low end of 67 and on the high end of 77. So like 50% more than you paid for, which is decent. That's pretty average for Bambox. Uh, that's what you can expect, usually 50% more than you pay for it, which is still good. It's not amazing, but it's good enough. And the things in here were great. I really like the autograph. Prop replica was well done. Pins are always nice. They always do a good job on those. And the art print is there. So as far as the score on this, I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. Good quality stuff, really enjoyable items, decent value. I think it's worth it. 7.5. And this is like a $45 box, by the way, if you didn't know. Next, Loot Crate. So this is finally back to being monthly. It's the wrong months because we we're owed like six months, six months of boxes. So this, I think, is December's box. Last month, we got November's box, and I think next month, we're finally getting October's box. So completely out of order, but at least they're showing up now. At least they're still back to a monthly thing. At least they're not stealing from us. So good enough. And I know this is um, December's boxes, but it came in June, so I'm just... Same with a lot of these. Some people or some companies like, this is technically May's, this is technically June's. It showed up in June. I'm going to call it June's box, and that's just how it's going to work. So anyway, this is the December slash June version of Loot Crate. Got a shirt from Goonies. Been seeing a lot of Goonies stuff lately, especially in monthly subscription boxes, specifically in shirts. This is like the sixth Goonies shirt that I've gotten this year from subscription boxes. What is it about Goonie shirts? Um, this one's okay. The quality on Loot Crate shirts are not great. They're kind of in the mid range, which is weird because they have a whole box dedicated to their clothing. You'd think they'd be a little better in quality, but these ones are okay. So as far as the score on this, I'm gonna give the shirt a five out of 10. Uh, it's, it's okay in quality. The design's okay, nothing super special. It's, it's decent. At least they're not doing some crazy color. I'm, I'm glad they're doing that. I've been suggesting this for years. They always do some really bright, gnarly color. Gray, gray is a good choice. I'll wear a gray shirt. Good choice, Loot Crate, gray. So $12 to $15 on that. Next, we got a comic standee. And this is of Spider-Ham. So I'll try to show a closer picture of it, but this is exactly like ones we've gotten before. So we, there are two different types of standees that they do. One is the comic cover where it's just kind of 3D, which is cool. And the next is this odd design where it's an action figure style, but the action figure is also like cut in half, which I've said a million times, it's just so weird. If they're just gonna do a small action figure, just put a regular one in there. Why cut them in half and do them halfway so it's like half action figure, half 3D standout, but it's not fully 3D, it's half 3D. It's just, I don't know, it's a weird combination of things. It doesn't look bad, so when you have it on display, like it still, it still looks fine, it's just really weird. I like that the they did the comic book covers that are 3D, that makes sense. Take something 2D, make it 3D. Now we've taken something that is 3D and made it like 2.5D. Very odd, you know, whatever. But the last ones we got were Spider-Man and Venom, and I have those sitting right over there, so not complaining too much. It's good enough. And then as far as as far as value on that, that's going for like 10 to 15 bucks, which is pretty reasonable. Most of the figures from this box go for around that price. And then last, got some drinkware from Jurassic Park. And these are some little shot glasses. And they're actually glass, which is nice. 
Uh, the print on them is just very basic. It honestly just kind of looks like a sticker. I know it's not a sticker. It's, it's some, They've actually put it on there. But the quality of it looks like there's just a sticker with an invisible background. And I'm hoping they work okay in the dishwasher, but I'm not sure if they'll stay on. But we got the little baby raptor, and we got Mr. DNA. So these are cool. Decent in quality. I like that. And I can never have enough shot glasses, so no complaints there. And then as far as value on that, that's going for 10 to 15, which I think is reasonable. Uh, I would expect drinkware usually goes a little higher, but these are small shot glasses, and not a lot of people use shot glasses still to this day, so I get why they didn't go for that much. And then last in here is not really an item, but they've started putting coupons in there for games, uh, mobile games that gives you something in the game. And this is basically just advertisement. I'm not giving this any sort of value. I'm just mentioning that it's in there so people know. So they give these little ads that gives you free shit in a certain mobile game that they're probably cross-promoting. So with that being said, the value on this on the low end is 32 On the high end is 45 uh, This is around a $30 box now, so you're only getting a little bit more than you paid for. On the high end, you're getting 50% more, but as I was saying, I probably wouldn't value these on the high end. They're more on the low end. The, the figure I can't see going for a, a good amount. The t-shirt was just okay quality, and the drinkware was decent quality, so a little bit more than you paid for, decent quality. I'm going to give this one a 5.5 5 out of 10. So uh, I'm still happy to see Loot Crate back. I'm, I'd rather have them than not, but... They've never been a super fantastic box, or they were a long time ago, but not in recent years. So not much to expect. I will say though, I, if I had to guess, you'll notice in here the theme was bite size, and the, I talked about the theme transform from their November box. The theme didn't really seem to fit. There were items in there that didn't really seem to fit the theme. And for this one, bite size, like Jurassic Park, I get that. Spider Ham, he's small, so I guess he's bite size. But the Goonies, like the fuck do the Goonies have to do with bite size? So I'm assuming what happened is, since they got so backed up on shipping, I think they just started putting whatever they could in the box just to ship them out. With And considering they were six months behind, I'd say that's a good call. I'm sure the original theme of it would have been much better, but I don't know this for sure, by the way. I'm just assuming because it's two months in a row where the theme didn't really seem to fit all the items. So I'm guessing they took things that were supposed to go somewhere else and just put it in the box just to get it out there, which fine that that works but it you know it is what it is it still seems like we should have gotten october's box first if that were the case but so i'm not 100 percent on that theory it just seems like that's what's happening just wanted to point that out all right on to the final two next we got zobi and this is their classic pop culture box so we got a shirt and this one's kind of the same as all their shirts they have this very similar theme where they kind of do this like almost like an infographic type of thing that like subtly hints to the movie and the graphics aren't bad they're 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 cool but they're they're just not a lot of ton of not a ton of design quality to it it just doesn't look like there was a ton of thought and a ton of artistic direction going into it and then as far as the t-shirt quality this is about as low as you can get. These Gildan shirts that are just very rough, very scratchy, very boxy. As far as printed shirts, this is the bottom of the barrel. So they don't fit well. They don't feel right. Uh, they're very crappy in quality. And the designs are subpar at best. So as far as a score on that, I'm only going to give it like a 4 out of 10. But it'll get the standard $12 to $15 value. Damn, can't talk. Next, we got an autograph from Diane. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that last name. Guerrero? Could be. I don't know. So I'm just going to call her Diane G. Uh, she was in Doom Patrol. She was also in uh, Encanto. She was uh, Isabella. And she did something else that the, I think they mentioned in here. Oh, uh... Orange is the New Black. She was in that too. So uh, a decently known act actress. Same as always, uh, not like a household name where everyone would know her by name. I don't even know how to pronounce her last name. But she's definitely been on something you've seen so to the point where you'd recognize the face. Enough to where I really appreciate this autograph. And this is going for about 25 to 30 which is pretty standard. So right where you would expect it to be. Good enough to sell if you wanted to and also recognizable. I'll definitely keep that. That's a good one. 12 to 15. Then we got a pin. 
and this is from Squid Game. Never checked it out. Uh, I heard it was a good show, but people just hyped it up too much. I, by the time I got around to watching, I'm like, I'm already over it, and I haven't even watched it. Uh, the pins they do, they do decent quality pins. They just always pick weird subject matter. Like, uh, they could have done something much more subtle to it, but this, this got this awkward Asian guy giving a really weird look. And I know it's relevant to the show, but I don't know. This, in this box in general, they just don't seem to have a lot of artistic direction. I, I feel like they need an art director there to tell them to what designs to put on shirts and what designs to make on pins, because they, they have the tools at hand, they're just not really using them in the appropriate way. So that being said, it gets a 12 to $15 value. Next, we got what they're calling a coin. And, you know, I, I don't know if I'd really classify it as a coin per se, but at the same time, I don't really know what else I would call it because it's it's circular, but it's not flat like a coin. It's like a con convex. So it's kind of like an oval when you put it to the side. And coins are definitely flat for the most part and flat around the side. And this is curved all the way around, just kind of an oblong shape. So the thing that resembles closest is definitely a coin, but... I wouldn't call this a coin. I don't think any coin collector would, but I just don't know a better name for it. So coin it is. And the value on this was very hard to find because they were just kind of all over the place. Um, I found them as low or sorry, I, all the listings I was seeing were 25 and higher, which is kind of high. The, the quality on this is pretty fantastic. I will say this has very nice quality and it's good metal. I'm guessing pewter. I don't really know, but it kind of feels like pewter, but there's a lot of detail in here. If I can, I'm hopefully showing a closer picture and there's very nice detail. So I wouldn't be surprised if it went for a high price, but 25 to $30 seems a little bit much. So that's what, if you technically wanted to buy it on eBay, you would have to pay that amount. But me personally, I would value this more at like $15. So for that reason, the value range on this is somewhere between $15 and $25. A big range, I know, but if they're not selling for that price, it's hard to say it's worth that, you know? So I try to just give my best opinion. But like I said, if you wanted it, you would have to technically pay that. So that brings our value on the low end of $64 and on the high end of $85. So this is pretty similar to... Um, BAM box where it's right around $45 to $50 depending on what your shipping costs are. So probably pretty close to 50% more than you paid for, but I most of these things I'd value on the lower end, that coin especially, so it's closer to that $64 range, so still pretty good around that 50%, but um, <clears throat> Quality on a lot of these things is a little bit lacking. They they do a good job on the pins. I just wish they would pick better subject matter. And the shirts are shit. They, they need to work on those for sure. Autograph was great. The coin was decent quality, so I liked it. So I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10. Good enough. Uh, everything around here was good enough. I, I enjoyed them. I'll keep most of them. So there you go. And our last item. Geek Fuel. The Geek Fuel Bag. This one's nice and simple. Damn it. All right. Got our shirt. And they've been doing a lot better with the designs on these shirts, too. They had a few months where they had just weird designs and they just weren't very good. They're getting better. This one's not like blow my mind fantastic, but it's really well done. Uh, if you can't tell by the picture, it's obviously Jurassic Park, but it's in like a tiki style theme. And things are really well done. And it's got Dilophosaurus. He's my favorite. So I was super psyched to see him in the new movie. That was really cool. And it's just overall well designed. The colors are good. Um, they got a nice subtle tone. They didn't pick some super bright color, which most companies would for a tiki themed shirt. I think they could have picked something different than black. But, you know, just being nitpicky. But it's well done. And the quality of the shirts is always super well. It's been going down a little bit, I would say, though. Um... The quality of the shirts used to be fantastic. Now it's just been okay. There have been a few times where I've got the shirt and it's fit a little bit weird. So I don't know if there have been any budget cuts or maybe that's just manufacturer defect. Maybe I was just unlucky. But I've noticed that a little bit more. But still way better than any other company. So this will get the standard $12 to $15 value. But as far as the score on that shirt, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. It looks really cool. Again, wish I could have worn it when I saw the movie. But it came after that. So well done. Nice fitting. Nice quality. Well deserved. Then our next and last item is a pin. Now, 
I will mention it does say Mondo pins. And if you didn't hear or see my last video and my long winded explanation on Mondo pins, they can be extremely valuable. Mondo, the company, does very high quality stuff. And I'm pretty sure they have a partnership with Geek Fuel because we've gotten some figures from them as well. And they're fantastic quality, like a very commendable, like they do a really good job. And the pins are no different. They're very well done and they can fetch a pretty penny. However, I didn't get a Mondo pin. So I thought it's weird that they would specifically mention Mondo and then not give Mondo. They could have just said, free mystery pin. And I would have been like, okay, here it is. But they specifically mentioned Mondo, which is very nice quality, very expensive. And I just got something a little more generic. Has an artist's name on the back, which is nice, but it's not Mondo, so odd. And as far as the value on this, I can only really find one person trying to sell it. And they were selling it for 15 to 20 and you know, fine. Uh, they do give good quality pins and Mondo pins are around that price. So I'm, I'm gonna be generous and give it that value of 15 to 20. So um, we have some other things in here that are worth mentioning, but I wouldn't give any value. We have our gift card per se, and they put a little sticker on there that says value uh, valid through 10 31 22 so i guess they wanted to make a point of saying it doesn't expire after a month which i i thought the site did say that they did but maybe they changed that because literally no one was using them and i'm guessing you still can't use more than one of these because if you could this would actually be good this would have value if you could stack these up five dollars at a time and if you collect enough you technically get a free item that would be great this that would give this some value but the fact that it's a coupon and can't be combined with anything and it still has an expiration date doesn't have any value because it's theoretical it's just a discount on something you might buy if you don't shop with them it's not worth anything they have cool items though the little description card in here showed some stuff more mondo stuff so if i could like stack these up i might actually get some of this but five bucks off isn't really worth my time so it's in there i feel like i always have to mention it but there's the story and then lastly we got a card in here which they uh, also mentioned was um had a limited run of 300 but I, I don't know. I, this looks exactly like the cards that were in the original set. I don't know if they're just really good at making replicas. And there's no number on the back to tell you what edition of 300 it is. And the, I only found one person trying to sell it for like 10 bucks, but no one was paying that. So it could be worth something. I personally wouldn't give this any value because it, I just don't think there's anything super special about it. But it has the potential for value. I just don't feel comfortable giving it value here unless I know more about it, which I really don't. They need to either give more information or be more honest because I'm not sure what to give as far as value, so I'm not giving it any, but I still feel like I should mention it was in there. That brings our value on the low end of 27 and on the high end of 35. So we do have this theoretical value of these things and it's nice that they put it in there but i think they need to tweak it a little bit i think they need to make some of these things combinable not maybe not indefinitely so you're not just getting free shit from them but more than five bucks where you could stack up at least two or three of them and again if they put a, an addition on the card that would probably give this some value so we know exactly what the number is and where it came from and the Mondo pins are good in quality, but again, didn't get Mondo. So really, they have decent quality shirts going for them, but that's all I can really say. They're, they're good enough, but I probably wouldn't have paid for them myself. So you're really only getting a little bit more than you paid for. I think this box is about $24, so you're pretty much getting what you put into it. I don't think it's worth it at this point. This company has definitely gone downhill over the years, and it's very, very sad to see. I've already said... I'm going to stick with them till the end, till they go out of business. So you'll keep seeing them here, but I really don't think it's worth the money. So I, I personally wouldn't go for it. But if you like their shirt designs, like why not show some support? Maybe they can turn it around. So as far as a score on this, I didn't write down a score. I'm going to give it a four out of 10. I, I don't, I wouldn't personally go for it if I hadn't been part of this company for so long. And I, I really don't think it's worth it. So four out of 10 on that. Sorry, Geek Fuel. You once were good, and now you are not. So, those are the boxes. I'm hoping to get back to a weekly system of videos now that I have more free time in the summer. But as I said in the last video, my computer took a shit, and I can't edit on it anymore. I have some, some computers at work, but they're not always available, so 
I'm gonna try to get more consistent, but I'm not sure how it'll work. But I think I'm gonna start posting videos on Fridays. I think I'm gonna pick a day. That way people can at least expect when to see it, when they can check back. I think that's a good idea to just pick a day of the week and be a little more consistent. So other than that, thank you for watching and supporting. So we got some good boxes here. Uh, we also have a, uh, some quarterly boxes for the next month. So that'll be a decent video as well. And I have some ideas for other videos and hopefully back to more movie reviews and some collecting advice. And as always, feel free to ask any questions you have about collecting, about buying, selling, investing. Any questions you have, I have all the answers right here. Feel free to ask down below. Other than that, thank you for watching and supporting. I'll see you on the next video. Love you all. Peace. Pup, where are you? Pup. Come here. What are you doing back there? Come on. Come up here. Oh, the doggy. Oh, the doggy. Give a kiss. Thank you. Another kiss. Thank you. There you go, boy. Shake. Oh, good boy. Spin around.